The next cut I'd like to showcase is a V cut. I use it in two different capacities. First one is to mark out details on the spindle, so to score a line rather than using just a pencil line. And the second way that I use it is to create a detail. A V cut creates a really sharp and crisp shadow line. Let's take a look. The first style of V-cut, shank perpendicular to the axis of rotation, long point down. I'm going to do the same swan dive, but I'm not going to dive in. I'm actually just going to pivot and slice and almost back out with the long point. I'm going to use this in scoring a detail. For example, let's say that I already marked out a detail with a pencil line, two details and I want to make them permanent into the blank so that I don't accidentally erase the pencil line if I change the cylinder size. Long point down, slice. Long point down, slice. I'll do a couple more lines on here, marking out some sort of feature in my spindle. Long point down, but you notice my handle is way down. I'm going to slice that long point into the wood and slice. This gives a really crisp detail, really crisp shadow line. But the fibers do tend to mushroom out or flare out on either side. So the next style of V-cut that I'm going to showcase is a style that I do to create that crisp, that crisp shadow line or that crisp effect. I'm going to do the same slicing action same kind of knee movement or leg movement and swan dive, but this time I'm going to angle the tool ever so slightly, tilting it, and I'm going to start with the tilted, and I'm going to end with my edge vertical. So from the left side, I'm going to tilt the tool so the edge is steering left, long point pointing right, and end with it vertical. Same thing, I'll repeat it on each of the features. If I go from the right side, it's the same thing in reverse. Tilt the tool to the right slightly, and vertical, and vertical, and vertical, and vertical. It's a very finishing cut. You don't want to take too big of a bite. So if I want to make this a deeper V, I need to now do a couple times on the right, and you'll notice the shaving builds up, and I need to do it on the left to relieve that shaving. Again, once or twice on one side, and once or twice on the other. Again, this is all in my knees and my legs. Take a look at my legs. It's the same motion as that peeling cut and the paring cut. You might notice that my knees are getting a little bit more dramatic. That's as I go deeper into the V. My legs have to bend a little bit more or actually extend a little bit more the further I get into the V. If it's a very small detail, I don't have to have as much of a dynamic movement. The larger the detail is to be able to cut from start to finish, the larger my body movement or my leg movement needs to be. You may find that you want to refine way down deep in that little V in the transition where the two facets meet. You can easily do that with your leg movement. And have lots of control. Take a look at the crispness. Really crisp detail from the cylinder transitioning into that V. And then the crispness way down in the valley of the V and all the way on the other side. There's no reason to sand this type of detail if you have a sharp tool and good tool control. Remember I'm using the long point down I'm using the same swan dive type action all the way down into the very bottom and I'm ending with my edge vertical. 
If I end with the edge engaged at the very bottom of the V, any little motion in the handle will make the edge engage and jump out of the V. You may have noticed that the V cut is a really nice transition from the pairing cut. The V cut, we add one more variable. So instead of just pairing and steering one bevel all the way down the face of the end grain, we now angle going one side and ending vertical with the edge and then repeating from the other side. This is a great exercise in your ability to create a symmetrical feature going on the right side and then going on the left side and repeating the mechanics for both sides.